in Florida, dangerous mistakes line our highways. And it's very easy to miss the fact that one bolt, one bolt in the wrong spot can kill you. Guardrails improperly installed. Yeah, I am mad. And I think people in the state of Florida should be mad too. 10 investigates a very real hazard. My human mind logically does not understand how that is okay. Prompting FDOT to take action. From 10 Tampa Bay, keeping you informed, prepared, and connected, this is Unguarded. When you're in a car, you expect that what's along the road is designed to keep you safe. But 10 Investigates has found that improperly installed guardrails lining your drive could be potentially dangerous. I'm Jennifer Titus. As part of our ongoing series, Unguarded, we're shining a light on this problem and the possible solutions. At any time during this special, you can scan that QR code in the bottom right corner of your screen to see our continuing coverage. We've uncovered stories of lives lost and tragedies that could have been prevented. And now because of our investigative work, there are major changes happening all in an effort to keep you safe. This investigation. Oh, it's cold. Takes us thousands of miles away from Florida to Belvedere, Illinois. Here it is. To sit down with this man. I don't think your story has truly ever been told. As he shares for the first time ever what happened to him along this Florida road. What was the date of the accident? October 29th, 2010. We swerved to miss a, like a Labrador or some big dog. The truck then hits this guardrail. To my understanding, guardrails are supposed to crumble like an accordion, kind of give cushion. I know it's metal, so it's not supposed to be soft, but this thing impaled the truck like a harpoon. Charlie's leg impaled. And I was without my left foot. <laughs> the weeks, the months, the years since the accident. Life has never been the same. On a scale of one to 10, how much pain do you live with on a daily basis now? Nowadays, I would say good day about four. Mm -hmm. Let's say four on a bad day when it's cold and maybe I slipped or something or if it, I have an open sore, 27. Here's the thing. It's a pain Charlie says he shouldn't have because the accident should have never happened. I was mad because if that guardrail wasn't there, we would have been fine. When you get out of the hospital and then you do learn that this guardrail was improperly installed, mm. how did you find that out? And, and how, what did you, how did you feel? I felt cheated kind of and anger very. Um, because of the whole situation. Charlie filed this lawsuit against the Florida Department of Transportation after the accident. The lawsuit claims the truck crashed into a guardrail that Florida inmates improperly installed and says the state was negligent in failing to keep, operate, repair, and maintain safe conditions on State Road 33. If you're gonna put something to help people, you gotta make dang sure it's built properly so it helps people. The lawsuit ended up going nowhere. But 10 years since Charlie's crash, 10 Investigates has located dozens of improperly installed guardrails across the state. It makes me upset that I, I got hurt for nothing and nothing changed, um, nothing. We compiled a database of improperly installed guardrails from Miami along I-4, I-75, the site of this deadly accident in Plant City back in January and just feet away from the Florida Department of Transportation headquarters in Tallahassee. And there's a bolt through the rail where it shouldn't be. This is Steve Eimers. He helped us create our database by randomly locating guardrails throughout the state and adding them to our list. Hitting the end of a guardrail, hitting a guardrail can be a very violent act. And it's very easy to miss the fact that one bolt, one bolt in the wrong spot can kill you. An upside down part 
can kill you. Steve was an EMT, not an engineer. He never went to school to study guardrails. But Steve's life was changed forever by one of these. I knew my daughter's situation was reportedly critical. I said, will there be any transports? And I said, no. And I didn't need a police officer to knock on my door at that point. I knew my daughter was dead. Hannah died at 17 years old after her car crashed into a guardrail. We were not even able to see her one last time. And it sent me down a rabbit hole that I'm not yet out of. That rabbit hole has led him to analyzing guardrails on roadways across the country. This is a systemic problem. Within weeks of working with Steve, our database grew to 72. And I've looked at that tiny, tiny percent. We're probably talking hundreds of potentially improperly installed guardrails. And this guardrail is also missing the initial perforations. We sent our database to University of Alabama Birmingham professor Kevin Schrum. The structural engineer agreed there are problems. For the most part, I was able to confirm what he had said and I found a lot of other things too that were wrong. The fact that a lot of those errors were very consistent in the same error uh, was a little bit alarming. Our investigation turning up not just improperly installed guardrails, but what one safety advocate calls monsters on the road. Is it? It's been three years. Yeah. That's it? Yeah. Oh my gosh, are you serious? And the emotion still so raw. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I definitely am too. Oh, wow. As the DeFilippos find a piece of a puzzle they wish they didn't have to put together. Oh, wow. Well. We'll take it with us. <laughs> this rusted door, they say, was part of the truck their son Hunter Burns was driving the morning of March 1st, 2020. It's hard to be strong. Yeah. It's hard to talk about. It's 646 on Sunday morning, and um, there's two knocks on the front door. So I spring up out of the bed, and there stands the two Florida Highway Patrolmen. They tell us that Hunter had been in an accident and that he had not made it. According to this crash report, Hunter's truck collided with a guardrail end. That impact forced the truck to rotate counterclockwise before overturning and colliding with a large overhead traffic sign support pole. Something just didn't sit right. Then she got a call from Steve Eimers. This is one of the most egregious installations I have ever found involving a fatal crash. They've got to figure out how it happened and it can never happen again. We had a 22 year old young man who hit a signpost and was incinerated. Yeah, I am mad. And I think the people of the state of Florida should be mad too. We partnered with Steve locating guardrails throughout the state that were not only improperly installed, but Frankensteined. Frankensteining, um, it goes back to, you know, the monster Frankenstein. It is when you take parts from different systems and mix them together. The parts that don't work together ultimately creates a monster on the roads. And with Steve's help, we located dozens of Frankenstein guardrails and inserted them into our database. He says the guardrail where Hunter Burns crashed is one of the most egregious installs he's ever seen. I think that FDOT needs to look deeply into this crash. They need to figure out what happened here. We tried for months to sit down with FDOT about our findings, even emailing them our entire database. While they wouldn't speak with us, we know they did speak to their contractors within 24 hours of our email. We located them at the guardrail where Hunter's crash happened. Three years later, it still wasn't repaired correctly. 
but it is now. And while our cameras were out shooting this Frankenstein guardrail on US 19, we witnessed an FDOT contractor pull up. What are you guys doing out here? Uh, we're just coming out. We were told to come and inspect it. This, uh, this guardrail is just, we're just coming out here because DOT had asked us to come out here and inspect it. So that's what just today. Just today. This guardrail was Frankenstein. I don't know what Frankenstein means. This guardrail in particular was one of the dozens of monsters on our list. And this guardrail is also missing the initial perforations. Kevin Shrum says it comes down to educating contractors. We have contractors that install guardrail. That, that's the primary source uh, for guardrail installation across the country and in most states. But when the guardrail installer doesn't necessarily know how an end treatment is supposed to work, they'll a lot of times just make the installation work. They'll put holes together that they think fit together or put bolts through holes that they think are supposed to be there. And if they don't understand the functionality of the terminal, they won't understand why doing so is, is bad or why it won't work. Why do I have to pay to walk? Because I got hurt because someone else messed up and now I have to pay for it? That stinks. You know, at, at, the, at the most simplest of terms, like, why do I have to pay to just be able to walk? I miss him so much. We want for them to be fixed and fixed correctly and put together correctly so that other parents and families don't have to walk this out. And while FDOT denied all on-camera interview requests, major changes coming. They initiated a statewide review of 26,000 guardrail installations. That revealed roughly one-third of the in-terminals, the in-treatments, and crash cushions need to be repaired. I'm told those repairs should be completed by the end of the year. I'm also told that they are re-emphasizing the importance of continuing education to all of their contractors. We've also been told by some companies that they've already implemented a mandatory annual training to all of their employees so they know how to install guardrails properly. But that may not be enough to stop these guardrails from ending up along the roads in the first place. Still ahead, a deeper dive into the system that some say lacks accountability to keep you safe. Welcome back. So you may be wondering, how did those improperly installed guardrails make it onto the road in the first place? How was that allowed to happen? Tonight, a deeper dive into the process and what we uncovered about the certificate of compliance that's supposed to protect you on the roads. It's essentially stating that uh, a specific and accepted guardrail has been installed at this location. We sent the documents to Kevin Schrum, a structural engineer and professor at the University of Alabama, Birmingham. Okay, so if the state does require a certificate of compliance, you expect that certificate of compliance to match the final product that is installed on the road? Yes, absolutely. We had him compare the certificate of compliance to the street view images of the guardrail, one from June 2018, a month after the final acceptance on the guardrail's documents were signed, and the image from September 2019, taken just before Burns' crash. I wish I could say I was surprised. Shrum says the guardrail in 2018 was improperly installed. It was upside down and backwards. Sometimes the certification process is a little bit uh, not as robust as it should be. I've spoken with some contractors in the industry where they talk about this process quite a bit, where the certification process, someone will just drive by without even stopping and then check it all off as, as certified. Some things you can catch uh, just by driving down the interstate at, at highway speeds. You know, some, some errors you can see. Then we reached out to the Florida Department of Transportation looking for answers as to whether this is the only form of documentation they have regarding what's being installed on the side of the roads. Photos of the final project are not required. They declined an on-camera interview, but told us in a statement, the certificate only confirms design plans were accurately built during a specific construction project. Adding the certificate may no longer represent what is out in the field if there were changes at some point during needed maintenance. Shrum noted changes in the photos from June 2018 and September 2019, indicating sometime during that time frame, the guardrail was changed. Uh, it makes no reference to uh, splicing the guardrail together. The guardrail at some point during those two years was turned into a monster. That is the issue here is that the things that are supposed to keep you safe, there's no, like you said, accountability for it. Hunter Burns died on March 1st, 2020. 
So did Isabella Alonzo. The same day, same interstate, 400 miles north in Peach County, Georgia. Same type of guardrail, Frankenstein's. And I didn't recognize her car. It was so mangled. The guardrail was sticking 10 feet up in the air. They already told us that she wasn't gonna make it. And I said, uh, do you see Jesus? And she shook her head. And I said, well, go with Jesus and, and we'll see you soon. Our colleagues across the country have found potentially problematic guardrails that have inspired major changes in several states. Georgia and Idaho's departments of transportation are both initiating statewide inspections on all of their guardrail systems. Maryland's DOT has replaced dozens of Frankenstein guardrails. They are also training their contractors on how to install guardrails correctly. And in North Carolina, crews fixed more than a dozen mismatched guardrails. Major changes to roadways across the state, the country, and up next. I do want to thank uh, Channel 10 in Tampa for bringing this to, to my attention and to the board's attention. What we uncover at the most magical place on earth. Okay, so where are we going? You can add our car to the millions of cars that drive these roads every single year through the most magical place on earth. There's one there, there's one there, there's one. There's another. But we're not here for the fun that's behind these entrances. There's the Magic Kingdom entrance, there's some guardrails. We've located dozens of improperly installed Frankenstein or obsolete guardrails throughout Walt Disney World's property. Disney's the most magical place on earth. What the? Come on, you you go to Disney for a you know this magical experience, and we have a guardrail that is Frankenstein with a slotted rail terminal and a and a generic rail, a BCT terminal that should have been off our roadways. Here's some outside of the neighborhood that's on Disney property. We tried sending our findings to Walt Disney World back in December, but we're told at the time to get a hold of the Reedy Creek Improvement District since they are the ones who oversee the roads. We've definitely emailed several times between January, February, and March. And never heard back? We heard back um, in early January when we sent that initial list. When we sent them this latest list with the dozens of guardrails. Did they ever get back to you on that database? I haven't seen any emails back from them, um, Reedy Creek nor Disney. So then we got a hold of Brian Onks Jr., a board member of the new Central Florida Tourism Oversight District. I do want to thank uh, Channel 10 in Tampa for bringing this to, to my attention and to the board's attention. It's what brought us here to the Board of Supervisors meeting. Onks, too, wanted answers. And so I just want to make sure I'm understanding all the numbers. Some locations were identified by WTSP Channel 10. What I'm interested in is how many locations have we identified to date that are uh, not up to current standards? Well, we, ha we have that analysis being done right now, so I'll have that within the next 30 days to have a complete program established. The cost to fix the guardrails around Disney property will be about $13 million. It's not just 10 investigates that's finding improperly installed guardrails. Viewers have been sending us their photos too. Ryan Wentz spotted problems with this Frankenstein guardrail at the Hillsborough Pinellas County line. It's since been fixed, but we know there are still damaged or improperly installed guardrails out on the roads. So we want you to send us them if you see them. Just head to 10 tampabaycom slash unguarded. There you can upload what you find. We've shown you the problem. Now one manufacturer says they have a solution. It's a sticker to help contractors instantly know which way the guardrail should face and prevent installers from putting it together the wrong way. We also met exclusively with structural engineers Dr. Kevin Shrum and Dr. Dean Sicking in Birmingham, Alabama. They showed us their latest guardrail technology, which they believe will keep drivers from crashing into ponds. the guardrail terminal head kind of bit into the front of that vehicle and caught it. 
started out at 10 degrees, ended up staying on the guardrail, didn't even spin out to the backside. Schrum says it would prevent drivers from having incidents like this one in Minnesota. A truck hit the end of a guardrail on the interstate and traveled more than 100 feet before rolling over the side of a barrier and onto a highway below. The driver survived. What we're finding is that in a lot of cases, that body of water or that bridge pier or whatever it is, is 120 feet away, 150 feet away and yet we're still getting 250 fatal crashes per year. We found that many, many lives could be saved if we could solve this problem. And, and I, I had an idea for, for how we could do it. And it took us a long time, it took us seven years, but we got it done. And there'll be a lot of people alive next year. While we've seen major changes and potentially millions of dollars in repairs and replacements to keep you safe, families are sharing their stories about crashes involving questionable guardrails. One father flew all the way from California to Florida looking for answers about how his daughter crashed on I-75 right at the exit for I-4. Scan the QR code to see his story, plus how you can report guardrails that you believe are improperly installed or even damaged. It's all at 10tampabay.com slash unguarded.